The RSV Endurance drifted silently through the inky blackness of space, the only sound the gentle hum of the ion engines. Captain Amanda Carter sat stoically in the command chair on the bridge, her eyes fixed intently on the viewscreen ahead. Somewhere out there, beyond the endless expanse of darkness, was their destination, a massive black hole that had only just been discovered by long-range sensors. This was to be the Endurance's maiden voyage, the first manned ship ever to visit a black hole up close. The entire crew was anxious, knowing the unprecedented dangers that lurked ahead. First Officer Michael Costello occupied the seat to Carter's right, reviewing system reports on his console. Costello and Carter had served together for years, an unshakable command duo who had seen their share of close calls, but nothing compared to the uncertainty of what they would encounter today. At the helm station in front of them sat young Ensign Silas Prescott, the ship's expert pilot. His hands expertly glided over the controls as he made minute course corrections, guiding them unerringly toward the coordinates of the anomaly. Though barely 30 years old, Prescott had proven himself many times over during the Endurance's rigorous shakedown trials back in Sol system. Amanda trusted him fully. Over at the science station to the left sat Dr. Anna Volodin, a brusque Russian astrophysicist who had led the team that discovered the black hole. Her intellect and drive were unmatched by any in her field, which had earned her a place on this historic mission despite her prickly personality. She stared intently at the sensor displays, eager to be the first human to directly study a naked singularity. The four officers spoke little, feeling the weight of the moment as they approached the point of no return. For all their rigorous training and preparation, nothing could change the fact that they were venturing into the unknown, a place where no humans had gone before. There could be no turning back now. Amanda broke the tense silence. Damage and system status report. Costello consulted his console. All ship systems nominal, structural integrity at 100%. We're ready for this, Amanda. Amanda nodded, allowing herself a grim smile. Let's do it then. Ensign Prescott, adjust course to final approach vector. Aye, Captain, Prescott responded, inputting the trajectory change. Approaching final vector now. Subtle vibrations rumbled through the deck as the ship's drive fluctuated to alter their course. The black hole grew larger in the viewscreen, still just a dark patch obscured by the motionless stars. Amanda stared at it intently, as if she could divine some of its secrets through sheer force of will. 50,000 kilometers to event horizon, reported Dr. Volodin, her voice taut. Radiation and magnetic field strength increasing toward predicted parameters. Any surprises so far, Doctor? Amanda asked. None so far, Volodin answered but this is uncharted territory. We don't know what we'll find once we get closer. A little mystery keeps things interesting, doesn't it? Said Amanda. Okay, people, no need to remind you we have one shot to get this right. Stay sharp. The endurance began to shudder more violently as it approached the black hole's sphere of influence. The yawning maw began to eclipse more and more of the star field ahead of them, a hungry giant consuming all in its path. Amanda gripped her armrest tightly as the shaking increased. 30,000 kilometers to event horizon, reported Volodin. Radiation at tolerable levels, magnetic field stronger but still within hull design limits. I can feel her pulling at us now, said Prescott through gritted teeth, making constant corrections at the helm compensating with lateral thrusters. Costello checked his monitors, brows furrowed with concern. Stress levels rising across the hull. Tighten your belts, people, this ride's about to get rough. Amanda closed her eyes, steeling herself. She had spent a career overcoming every obstacle to reach this historic moment. No force in the universe would stop her now. Hold fast, everyone. We press on. 
The ship groaned as the pull of the black hole intensified. They were close now, perilously close. Warning klaxons began to blare ominously through the cabin. Amanda held her breath. Event Horizon is dead ahead, shouted Prescott. 10,000 kilometers and closing. Warning, Volodin yelled over the din. Gravitational shear forces are spiking. The hull can't take much more of this. Amanda felt her chest constrict. They couldn't fail, not when they were so tantalizingly close to their goal. There had to be a way. Vent the plasma from the lateral thruster chambers on my mark, she commanded. We'll use the blowback to counter the pull. Now, Prescott complied immediately, venting the superheated plasma into space. The ship lurched forward with a burst of momentum as the plasma erupted behind them like rocket exhaust. Groans of straining metal echoed through the cabin. It's working, shouted Prescott. We're pushing through 5,000 kilometers to event horizon and holding. Hull integrity at 80% and falling, warned Costello. We can't take much more of this. Amanda clenched her fists, willing the ship forward. They were almost there. Just a little more, girl. You can do this. The ship was like a living thing to Amanda with a will of its own. She had to trust that will now. Another massive groan reverberated through the hull as the gravitational forces continued to build. Amanda watched in horror as the view screen began to crack, spiderweb fissures spreading across its surface. Warning alarms blared at deafening levels. Hull breach imminent, Costello shouted over the din. Emergency systems failing. Amanda closed her eyes. She had failed. After coming so far to have victory snatched away at the last moment dot dot dot, it was too cruel to bear. I'm sorry, everyone, she said softly as the ship crumbled around them. I thought we could make it. The hull ruptured, exposing the bridge to the vacuum of space. Silent screams filled the cabin as the atmosphere rushed out in a roaring torrent. The darkness of the black hole loomed ahead, poised to consume them. Amanda felt a strange sense of peace wash over her as oblivion rushed to embrace her. So this was how it would end. But the future would remember what they had accomplished here today. Other explorers would follow and succeed where she had failed. The march of progress was unstoppable, a force greater than any one person. Her sacrifice would inspire those who came after. Amanda closed her eyes as the records of the RSV endurance flashed through her mind one last time. Let it be remembered that we gave everything to uncover the secrets of the universe, she thought. History is made by those willing to push boundaries. The darkness enveloped her and she thought no more. Amanda's eyes snapped open as blaring alarms jolted her back to consciousness. It took her a moment to regain her bearings. She was still on the bridge of the Endurance, but they had survived passing through the event horizon. The view screen ahead displayed a hypnotic swirl of light and darkness as the black hole's gravitational forces warped space-time around them. Status report, Amanda barked, shaking off the disorientation. What happened? Ensign Prescott turned from the helm, astonishment on his face. We made it through, Captain. The ship is intact. Dr. Volodin looked up from her console, equally amazed. When the hull began to rupture, we were enveloped in some kind of quantum energy bubble. It reinforced the ship's structure long enough for us to pass the event horizon. We're alive. Amanda struggled to process this. Mere moments ago, she had been certain they were all doomed. But somehow, inexplicably, the endurance had been saved. First Officer Costello immediately began running full system checks. Before long, he gave an all clear. Other than some buckling in the outer hull were mostly unscathed. All major systems are operational. I don't know how, but we survived. A smile broke across Amanda's face. They had beaten the odds and accomplished what no human ever had, ventured past the event horizon of a black hole and lived to tell the tale. 
she swelled with pride for her indomitable crew. Nice flying, Mr. Prescott, she said. It seems we have you to thank for pulling off this miracle. Prescott shook his head. I wish I could take credit, ma'am, but I'm as shocked as everyone else that we made it. Whatever force saved us, it wasn't anything I did. We can ponder the cause for our survival later, Vuladan interjected. For now, we have an unprecedented opportunity. We are the first to observe her a black hole's interior. Her fingers flew across the science station as she began eagerly taking readings. Amanda nodded. Agreed. Let's get to work, people. We have a lot of lost time to make up for. Ensign Prescott, what's our status? Prescott checked his displays. Fusion reactor is humming along nicely. Life support optimal. Thrusters are online and responding. He fired a brief test burst to confirm. We're doing better than should be possible after that ordeal, he said with a bewildered shake of his head. Appreciate the good fortune, Ensign, Amanda said with a smile. Now, take us in gently. Let's see what secrets this black hole has been hiding. Aye, Captain. Proceeding further in at one quarter thrust. The endurance moved cautiously inward as the crew began scanning and recording everything around them. At first, they saw little but the chaotic swirling of superheated matter being drawn inexorably into the black hole's core. But the further they went, the more astonishing their discoveries became. These readings are off the charts, Volodin said with rising excitement. The gravitational forces inside the event horizon are far beyond anything we've theorized. They're warping space-time to extremes. Could this be evidence of quantum gravity? Costello asked. Most models have predicted that conventional physics would break down under these conditions. Volodin nodded enthusiastically. That does appear to be the case. Our very understanding of reality is being turned on its head. Despite the wonders around them, Amanda remained focused on keeping her crew safe. Don't get distracted, people. Eyes on your instruments. Ensign Prescott, any danger signs? Prescott monitored the ship's systems vigilantly as he piloted them further in. So far, so good, Captain. The hull is holding up under the stress. No immediate red flags. What have you got over there, Dr. Volodin? Amanda asked. Anything we should be worried about? Hmm, hard to say, Volodin murmured, intent on her data. The extreme warping of space is actually protecting us from the worst effects we expected. It's almost as if... Her voice trailed off as her screens flashed urgently. Wait, I'm detecting. An energy surge coming from deep inside the black hole. The source is unknown. Amanda tensed. An unknown energy source was always reason to be concerned. What type of surge? Is it a threat? Volodin studied the new data rapidly streaming in. The energy signature is highly unusual. It's not electromagnetic radiation or anything I can identify, but it's becoming more intense the closer we get to the center. Options, people? Amanda looked around at her senior staff. Costello spoke first. Could be dark energy or something like that. I say we hold position here until we figure out more. I don't like unidentified energy sources this deep in a black hole, said Prescott nervously. We should fall back outside the event horizon until the source is confirmed. Volodin shook her head. This phenomenon may only occur near the center. We must investigate further before withdrawing. Amanda weighed the arguments carefully. Her instincts told her to proceed, but cautiously. We'll hold at this depth for now. Ensign Prescott, station keep here. Let's gather as much data as we can about this energy surge. For the next several hours, the crew meticulously analyzed the mysterious energy readings, but found nothing conclusive. Speculation ranged from dark matter interactions to hawking radiation, but no theory fully explained what they were seeing. Yet the closer they crept toward the black hole's center, the stronger the surges became. Eventually, Volodin called the crew together to share her analysis. 
You should see this, she said ominously. The energy surges are not random. They're coming in concentrated bursts, with regular intervals between. It's a pattern, Costello said with dawning understanding, like a signal of some kind. Impossible, Prescott scoffed. What kind of signal could originate deep inside a black hole? One not created by natural processes, Amanda said gravely. The question we must ask ourselves is, could this be evidence of intelligent life? The bridge fell silent at the enormity of the possibility. Finding conclusive proof of extraterrestrial intelligence would be the greatest discovery in human history. Volodin broke the silence. I can only see one plausible explanation. The energy surges constitute a message. We must decipher it. If it is a message, it likely contains vital data about the black hole's nature, Costello mused. This could be the key to unlocking revolutionary physics. Amanda paced the deck contemplating their next move. Her mind raced with the implications. LF, we turn back now. We may lose this opportunity forever. But proceeding risks the ship and everyone aboard if the forces inside grow too great. Captain, I believe the potential reward outweighs the danger, said Volodin fervently. We must intercept the source. Prescott looked uneasy but nodded. I don't like it, but confirming alien contact is too monumental to walk away from. I'll get us as close as I can. Amanda gave the order. Very well. Take us in, Mr. Prescott. Slow and steady. Apprehension filled the bridge as the endurance pushed further into the black hole's interior. The energy surges bombarded the ship more violently, buffeting them with massive forces. But within the maelstrom, patterns emerged, distinct waves repeating in complex rhythms. There can be no doubt, said Volodin emphatically. This is a message. I'm detecting movement near the core, Prescott shouted over the din as the ship shuddered under the strains. There's something alive down there. Amidst the swirling chaos ahead, a faint glow became visible, pulsing in sync with the energy bursts. Amanda stared intently, hardly believing what she was seeing. My God, we found it. There's really something inside. As they drew rapidly closer, the glow resolved into a brilliant, shimmering sphere, somehow untouched by the black hole's forces. Amanda was awestruck by its beauty and serenity. She knew with utter conviction that it was the intelligence behind the signal. We did it, she whispered. My crew, today we make history. This moment will forever change humanity's place in the universe. We now know we are not alone. Overcome by emotion, Amanda could only stare at the radiant globe ahead, which now completely filled the view screen. She sensed no malice or danger from it, only patience and a desire to communicate. At last, Volodin broke the spellbound silence. We need to study this directly. I propose launching a probe to interact at close range. Amanda considered this carefully. They could not rush recklessly into contact. Proceed with extreme caution, Doctor, but this moment is too important to squander. The probe launch was prepared while Prescott maintained their position. Volodin took charge of scanning the entity for any reaction as the small reconnaissance craft was deployed. No changes so far, Volodin reported. It should not perceive the probe as a threat. Amanda nodded. Take us in, Mr. Prescott. Let's see if we can make first contact. White-knuckled grips on controls, the crew united in purpose as the probe floated gracefully toward the shimmering sphere. Amanda found herself holding her breath. What they did here today could change the course of human civilization. She stared intently for any reaction as the probe neared its target. Any second now, they would know if their gamble paid off or if the mysterious entity would react with hostility. Time seemed frozen the universe waiting on tenterhooks for this singular moment. Aboard the Endurance, the bridge crew watched with bated breath as the probe drifted closer to the luminous sphere. Amanda stared intently at the view screen, 
hardly daring to hope they could establish contact so easily. Distance now only 10 kilometers, reported Volodin. So far, no reaction from the entity. The probe crept forward, silhouetted against the shimmering light. Amanda found herself transfixed by the sight, the culmination of humanity's age-old dream of confirming intelligent life beyond Earth. Her heart pounded as the moment of truth drew inexorably nearer. Five kilometers to contact, announced Volodin, all probe systems reading green. Amanda shared a tense glance with Costello. After coming so far, she could scarcely believe they were on the cusp of this monumental breakthrough. The sphere loomed ever larger as the probe closed the remaining distance. Success felt within their grasp. Suddenly, warning alarms blared across the bridge. Amanda whirled toward the front view screen as the probe veered sharply away from its trajectory, bucking wildly as if yanked by an invisible force. It's been caught in a gravitic surge, Prescott yelled, hands flying over the controls. I'm losing control. Amanda watched helplessly as the probe was dragged by accelerating forces toward the black hole's fiery core. All their hopes vanished in an instant as the small craft tumbled away, vanishing from sight into the blinding maelstrom. No! cried Volodin. We were so close! She frantically checked her data, hoping the probe could somehow resist the gravitational forces and break free. But the readings offered no hope. Amanda felt the bitter bite of disappointment wash over her. To have their prize snatched away when it was within reach hurt deeply. But there was no time for regret. They had to act quickly. Can we retrieve the probe using grappling beams? She asked Prescott. The young ensign was already shaking his head before she finished speaking. No good, Captain. The gravitation forces inside the event horizon are too extreme now. We'd only get pulled in ourselves. Amanda cursed under her breath. The probe represented billions of dollars of technology and their best chance at making contact. But she would not sacrifice her ship and crew in a futile gesture. The mission had to come first. Very well, she said heavily. Reel the beams back in. We'll have to find another way to recover the probe. The probe's trajectory appeared to be heading directly toward the black hole's core, said Costello. It looked almost guided. Could the entity have pulled it in deliberately? Valadin shook her head. Unlikely. I detected no actions by the sphere. More likely, the anomalies within the black hole interfered. Her console beeped and she examined the new data with surprise. Wait, I'm detecting a transmission from the probe on a tight beam gravitic channel. It's still active inside the event horizon. Can we track it? Amanda asked urgently. If the probe was broadcasting, there was a slim chance they could follow it inside and regain contact. Yes, said Volodin excitedly. The signal is weak but coherent. I can trace its path using gravitational sensors. We may be able to pursue it. Amanda felt a surge of hope. Perhaps their mission could yet be salvaged. Make it so. Ensign Prescott, follow the probe's gravitic signature. Nice and easy. Let's see how deep this rabbit hole goes. Prescott input the new heading as Costello integrated the tracking data with their navigation systems. The endurance began creeping forward along the probe's calculated trajectory, penetrating deeper into the black hole. The further they went, the more chaotic their surroundings became, until space itself seemed to warp and billow around them. We've entered a severe gravitic shear zone, Prescott reported, fighting to keep the ship on course as the forces battered them relentlessly. It's taking all we've got just to maintain structural integrity. Amanda clung tightly to her command chair. Steady as she goes, Ensign. How's our fix on the probe? Volodin's eyes were glued to her instruments. Its signal is fluctuating but still detectable, the probe appears to be slowing its descent. Did it manage to break free of the gravitational pull? Costello wondered aloud. Unlikely, said Volodine. 
but something deep inside the black hole is acting upon it. They continued edging forward, the endurance groaning under the unearthly stresses. The maelstrom raged outside the view screen, an all-consuming cyclone. To Amanda, it felt like flying into the heart of a raging star. She checked the hull integrity readings constantly, wary of pushing their luck. The probe has stopped moving, Valadin exclaimed. It is holding at a fixed position approximately 5,000 kilometers directly ahead. Amanda exchanged an astonished glance with her officers. What could have halted the probe's movement in this gravitic inferno? But there was only one way to find out. Take us in, Mr. Prescott. Let's see what's got hold of our probe. White-knuckled at the helm, Prescott guided them toward the signal source. As they closed in, the chaos outside diminished until they entered an oasis of calm, a gravitational eye surrounded by the storm. And there, drifting serenely ahead, was the probe. Amanda could scarcely believe their good fortune. Incredible, murmured Volodin. Some localized phenomenon has trapped the probe instead of crushing it. It's more than simple gravity, Costello said. Scanners are detecting temporal distortions as well. It's as if time itself is being manipulated. He shook his head in wonder. The power required is unimaginable. Regardless, now's our chance to reel in the probe and get some answers, said Amanda decisively. Ensign Prescott, on my mark, grapple it with the retrieval beams and bring it aboard. Prescott maneuvered the ship into position, taking hold of the probe and gently drawing it back into the hangar bay. Amanda allowed herself a deep breath of relief. Perhaps this setback could still be turned to their advantage. The probe may have gathered invaluable data before its capture. As the hangar bay repressurized and Costello went to examine the probe, Amanda turned her attention back to their surroundings. If something down here could seize and hold the probe, what else might it be capable of? Were they in danger themselves? Her unspoken questions were soon answered. Massive gravimetric reading ahead, shouted Valadine in warning. Something is emerging from the black hole's core. On the view screen, a boiling vortex began to form. Amanda's eyes widened as a titanic shape took form, casting off the gravitational forces like water. The object was spherical, hundreds of meters across, its surface a gleaming onyx black. Amanda stared in awe and apprehension as it drifted inexorably toward them. What in God's name is that thing? Prescott whispered. It appears to have been contained within the heart of the singularity, marveled Volodin, scanning furiously. The material, unknown, but incredibly dense, yet the sphere itself contains infinitesimal mass. How can that be? asked Amanda nervously. If this object could materialize at will from a black hole's core, there was no telling what it was capable of should it prove hostile. Scans show complex space-time distortions across its surface, Volodin replied with excitement. It exists simultaneously in our realm, an extra-dimensional space. It may not be completely bound by physical laws. Amanda studied the sphere intently as it loomed closer. It made no movements or signals, gave no hint of its nature or intent. But she knew one thing with utter certainty. This was the intelligence controlling the black hole, the source of the gravitic signals. It had to be. Whatever it is, it's taken notice of us, Costello said grimly, returning to the bridge. I advise caution, Captain. We have no way to anticipate its actions or resist a direct assault. Amanda weighed their options quickly. Running was not an option this deep inside the black hole's grip, and although every instinct told her this powerful entity could eliminate them on a whim, she felt no hostility in its presence. In fact, she perceived only patience and curiosity as if it was the one studying them. I don't believe it means us harm, she said at last. My gut says it wants peaceful contact. Let's signal our peaceful intentions and see how it responds. After a pause, Costello nodded reluctantly. Your captain, 
I hope your gut is right. Amanda attempted contact using all known protocols while Volodin transmitted the mathematical constants of physics, hoping to find some common ground. But the sphere remained silent and unmoving. Why doesn't it respond? Prescott asked anxiously. What is it waiting for? Volodin threw up her hands. Its intelligence could be vastly beyond ours. We may be no more comprehensible to it than microbes are to us. As Amanda considered their next move, the bridge doors slid open and the ship's chief engineer burst in, sweat beating his brow. Captain, you need to see this immediately. Exchanging puzzled glances with her officers, Amanda followed him down to the hangar bay where the recovered probe still rested. As they entered, she stopped short, gaping in shock at the sight before her. The probe lay split open, its encrypted data modules completely exposed. But even more alarming were the symbols etched onto every surface, the walls, even the deck plating. Complex mathematical formulas and geometric shapes covered every inch in intricate detail. It just appeared suddenly, the engineer said breathlessly. The material covering the walls, it's not any alloy we have on record. I think, I think it reformatted itself. Amanda stepped closer, examining the cryptic etchings. The symbols appeared vaguely familiar, tickling at her memory until suddenly it clicked. My God, this looks like the scribblings of Albert Ramos. Costello blanched in recognition. You mean the astrophysicist who went missing 10 years ago? The one who descended into obsession trying to prove alien contact before he vanished without a trace? Amanda nodded solemnly. These look like the formulas he was working on toward the end. He must have been right. She turned to the engineer gravely. Scan these symbols and get them to Volodin immediately. I have a feeling they're of critical importance. As the engineer rushed to comply, Amanda stared at the intricate symbols with new understanding. If Ramus truly made contact, there was no limit to what revelations might be contained here. The answers humans had sought for millennia could finally be within reach. Returning hastily to the bridge, Amanda asked Volodin for an update. The Russian scientist turned from her console, visibly shaking. I've analyzed the scan data, she said breathlessly. If I'm right, these formulas may allow us to communicate with the sphere. Amanda's pulse raced. Then let's not waste any more time. She opened a ship-wide channel. All hands, this is the captain. We are about to make first contact. Taking a steadying breath, Amanda transmitted the formulas toward the sphere, complementing them with images of humanity, Earth, and their desire for mutual understanding. Then she waited, hardly daring to breathe, for an answer that would determine humanity's fate. The sphere remained impassive as the code was received and processed. Long moments passed in nerve-wracking silence. Finally, Costello detected a response, a single pulse of gravitic energy, echoing one of the mathematical sequences they had sent. Amanda stared in wonder at the sphere. Had communication been established? More pulsed replies came, falling into complex rhythms and patterns. Volodin looked up from her console, face alight. It's responding. The sequences are highly ordered. I'm analyzing them now. As the pulsations continued, Amanda allowed herself an exultant smile. At long last, a centuries-old dream was being fulfilled. Keep recording and translating the signals, she told Volodin eagerly. We have first contact. Against all odds, they had successfully opened a channel to an intelligence beyond their universe. Amanda's mind reeled at the possibilities. With patience and understanding between their species, the secrets of the cosmos could be unlocked. This was merely the first step on an epic voyage of discovery for humanity. Setting aside her wonder, Amanda sat down to begin the historic dialogue. She knew the sphere awaited. There was so much to say and learn on both sides. With open minds and open hearts, this moment could be the dawn of an enlightened new age. 
Taking a deep breath, she began to speak. Greetings. We come in peace. A charged silence fell over the bridge as the crew waited anxiously for a reply. Amanda leaned forward intently, hardly daring to breathe. Exploratory attempts to communicate with the mysterious sphere had yielded nothing so far. She could only hope their latest effort of mathematical and physics constants would elicit some response. At the science station, Dr. Volodin studied the incoming data, looking for any indication their message was received. Amanda glanced her way, hopefully. Finally, Volodin shook her head. No definitive response yet, Captain. The sphere remains enigmatic. Amanda sat back with a disappointed sigh. What more could they do to bridge this gulf? She turned questioningly toward Ling, the junior xenolinguist. Any insights you can offer, Specialist Ling? You know our contact protocols better than anyone. Ling chewed her lip thoughtfully. Hard to say, Captain. We're venturing far beyond known first contact scenarios here. Our assumptions of shared frames of reference may not apply. So what do you recommend? asked Amanda. We need to get more creative, Ling said. Draw on more abstract concepts, expressive art, music, emotions and logic, not just math and science. Amanda smiled at the young specialist encouragingly. Sounds worth a try. Assemble a mixed outreach package, linguistics combined with culture and arts. Let's see if we can pique a reaction. As Ling got to work, Amanda gazed pensively at the sphere dominating the view screen. Someone had constructed this technology advanced enough to exist partially outside the physical universe. That implied an intelligence with motivations and thoughts comprehensible to humans, if only they could make a connection. She had to believe communication was possible, given time and persistence. Her introspection was interrupted by Costello at the Ops Station. Captain, I'm detecting energy fluctuations emanating from within the sphere. He checked his readings, puzzled, modulating in complex patterns almost like language, said Volodin, intrigued. A verbal transmission? Infrasonic vibrations, Costello confirmed. Too low frequency for our ears to detect. Can you isolate and translate it? asked Amanda, hopefully. Costello worked quickly filtering out background noise, boosting gain, parsing vocabulary patterns. Here we go. A gruff, staccato voice emanated over the bridge comms. The alien speech was like stones tumbling together, filled with harsh gutturals and sibilants. Amanda listened intently for any recognizable words, but the language was utterly alien. Volodin shook her head after a minute totally indecipherable. Without a baseline vocabulary, translation is impossible. Keep recording everything, said Amanda. Ling, get to work breaking down those speech patterns. There may be linguistic keys we can leverage. Aye, Captain, the specialist replied eagerly. This is exactly the kind of data we need. As the unknown voice fell silent, Amanda tried hailing them again using simplified pictographs and mathematical concepts. Costello aimed tight beam signals directly at emitting points on the sphere's surface. After several minutes, the gravelly voice responded with a short burst, then fell silent once more. Ling's eyes lit up as she analyzed the new exchange. I think we're getting somewhere, Captain. Their latest transmission used some of the same symbols and tonal cadences as our message. I believe they're attempting meaningful dialogue. Keep signaling, Amanda urged. Draw in concepts from physics, philosophy, art, anything that conveys who we are. Let's build on this momentum. For the next two hours, the endurance and the sphere exchanged streams of data, seamlessly integrating each other's symbols and meanings. With each new transmission, the gulf between their minds narrowed. Watching over Ling's shoulder, Amanda marveled at the young specialist's skill in navigating these uncharted linguistic waters. Each small breakthrough brought them closer to true communication. Finally, 
Ling leaned back and removed her interface headset. That's all I can accomplish for now, Captain. I believe both sides have laid a strong foundation. Amanda smiled and squeezed the specialist's shoulder. Outstanding work. You've made historic progress today. She opened a shipwide channel. All hands, stand by for first contact. Turning to Costello, she gave the order. Open the channel. Costello sent a ping indicating their readiness for open dialogue. After a long pause, the alien voice spoke again in a continuous series of deep, resonant tones. Ling's fingers flew across her console as she interpreted. They're extending greetings and expressing curiosity about our origins, asking our dot 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 intentions. She cocked her head before revising her translation. Not asking, more like a formal inquiry of intent? Amanda furrowed her brow thoughtfully. The translation was still rough, but she believed she grasped the essence of the message. Their actions had placed them under scrutiny by a powerful, ancient intelligence. This called for discretion and honesty. Tell them our intentions are peaceful, she replied. We seek only greater understanding between our species. Costello transmitted her words. The alien voice did not respond immediately, and the bridge crew exchanged nervous glances at the prolonged silence. Finally, a longer burst of alien speech filtered through the comms. Ling listened intently, then reported, They say, while peaceful intent is wise, one should not seek that which cannot be grasped. The essence of the universe is not for minds such as ours. Consequences of ignorance cannot be predicted. Amanda's eyes narrowed. Do they imply we are not capable of understanding? It's a warning, Captain, Ling said, meant to temper our ambition, but not hostile. Acknowledge the warning, but restate our desire for open knowledge sharing, Amanda replied after careful thought. There was valuable insight to be gained here, she was certain of it. They only needed to convince their enigmatic counterpart. Their dialogue continued in this vein for some time, the alien intelligence presenting obtuse cautions and riddles, while Amanda patiently but persistently pressed for mutual understanding. Eventually, the alien speech patterns grew less circuitous. We are achieving a true dialogue, Ling reported excitedly. Language barriers are dissolving rapidly. Keep engaging, urged Amanda. We're building trust. After several more exchanges, the alien signaled a pause in communications. Amanda took the opportunity to gather her senior staff for an assessment. Opinions? She asked the assembled crew. Volodyne spoke first. The sphere intelligence remains evasive, but these recent conversations are promising. Agreed, said Costello. They are clearly taking our measure before fully committing. Prescott shifted uneasily. Are we sure this isn't just a distraction? They could be manipulating us for their own purposes. Amanda acknowledged his concerns. A valid consideration, but our instincts tell us their intents align with ours, to make contact. And there's much we can offer each other, Ling added enthusiastically. Amanda shared a smile with the specialist, admiring her passion. I see no reason not to continue engagement, she told her staff, but stay vigilant, all of you. We tread new ground today. They returned to the sphere signal, which was pulsing with a regular rhythm. As Costello focused sensors on the pulses, a stunning image resolved on the main viewer, a vivid nebula of swirling colors and light. Amanda gasped in awe. Incredible! Is this what I think it is? They're sharing star maps, Volodin exclaimed. This could be a treasure trove of data. The breathtaking display lasted several minutes before the alien speech resumed. Ling picked up the translation. They welcome us to the community of worlds, Say we have passed their tests and proved worthy of receiving knowledge. Elation flooded Amanda. Open our entire cultural database to them. Let true exchange begin. 
As linguistic interfaces connected their systems, Amanda relaxed into her chair, overcome with wonder at this momentous achievement. After long trials, they had finally broken through the barriers of suspicion and isolation. Minds from two worlds now bridged the endless dark between the stars. In the hours that followed, Amanda watched in admiration as her crew rapidly absorbed and integrated staggering amounts of new data. Alien concepts and experiences filtered through the ship's databases, unlocking revolutionary insights. By sharing their mental treasures, both civilizations were elevated beyond what either could achieve alone. During a lull in the data transfer, Prescott called Amanda's attention back to the main viewer. Captain, spatial distortions are accumulating around the sphere. I think it's powering up. Frowning, Amanda watched as the sphere became obscured. Costello, report. What's happening? Massive energy spikes across the spectrum, Costello replied anxiously. Some kind of internal buildup. Spatial warp field is fluctuating rapidly. Alarms blared as Amanda gripped her chair. Raised shields. All hands brace for contact. The sphere lit the cosmos with a blinding flare that forced Amanda to shut her eyes. A shockwave buffeted the endurance violently, shaking the bridge. When the flare subsided, Amanda opened her eyes to a startling sight. The perfect sphere was gone. In its place, a battered, elongated, ovoid starship now occupied the viewer. Amanda recognized its configuration instantly, just as her grandfather had described from the ancient data archives. My God, she whispered. It's a Jupiter II class warp vessel. She whirled toward Volodin and Ling. Tell me you're getting this. Actual voices. Ling's hands trembled with excitement. Yes, Captain. The distortion was their cloak deactivating. I'm translating alien survivors aboard that ship. Stunned, Amanda absorbed this bombshell revelation. The sphere intelligence had never existed. They had been communicating with fellow space travelers stranded here, marooned beyond their home for who knew how long. She opened hailing frequencies. This is Captain Carter of the RSV Endurance. We are here to assist you. Ling translated the torrent of alien cries that followed. They welcome you with gratitude and joy. We have freed them from exile. Tears shone in her eyes. They say we bring hope of home. For a moment, Amanda was too overcome with emotion to respond. At last, she found her voice again. Tell them it is our honor. They will journey with us as our honored guests. Approaching the battered ship, her heart swelled for its occupants. What tales they must have to share after so long alone and adrift. She vowed to see them safely to their homeworld once more. A timid signal barely registered through the static, but it was laden with urgency. Amanda gave the order to lock on and bring the weakened transmission aboard. Whatever its source, it needed their help. The Endurance trembled as the alien ship docked in the main bay. Amanda assembled her senior staff in the landing port, muscle memory taking over as she checked her ceremonial pistol and straightened her dress uniform. Regulations dictated proper procedure for first contact. No telling what form our guest will take, she warned her officers. Be alert, but we must extend full courtesies. They nodded a palpable mix of nerves and excitement. Even seasoned crews couldn't suppress wonder at this moment. With a heavy clunk of magnetic locks engaging, the outer airlock spiraled open. Amanda caught her breath, pulse racing in anticipation. A motley skeletal robot clanked awkwardly through the hatch, peppered with scorch marks and mismatched parts. It shuffled forward until Amanda raised her palm in the universal gesture for stop. I am Captain Amanda Carter of the RSV Endurance, she said formally. We greet you in peace and friendship. The robot cocked its head quizzically before answering in a tinny, wavering voice. 
Well, smack my transistors, actual human space folk. Call me Sparks, little lady captain. Mighty pleased to meet ya. Amanda couldn't help an astonished smile. The almost comical-sounding robot seemed no emissary for a cold alien intelligence. She sensed only earnest joy behind its words. The pleasure is ours. Sparks, please know your safety and comfort is our highest priority. The robot bowed gracefully despite its dilapidated state. Your hospitality does you credit. My master will be most eager to converse with you. Sparks pivoted and gestured eagerly for someone to emerge from within the alien ship. Holding her breath, Amanda waited as heavy footsteps echoed from the airlock. A tall, powerfully built alien ducked through the hatch and straightened to regard the assembled humans. Clad in simple tunic and trousers, his leonine features were framed by a wild mane of silver hair and beard but his piercing blue eyes shone with keen intelligence tempered by kind wisdom. Instinctively, Amanda knew this regal being was the leader they had indirectly contacted. She stepped forward, placing her hand on her heart in formal greeting. I am Captain Amanda Carter. In the spirit of fellowship between our peoples, I welcome you aboard the Endurance. The alien chieftain inclined his head graciously. Well met, Captain. I am Torval, patriarch of the Ursan race. Your arrival is truly fortuitous. His voice was a bass rumble, but his words rang clearly in Amanda's mind. Her universal translator chip allowed instant comprehension. You have our deepest thanks, Torval continued solemnly. When the warp core destabilized, I feared my crew was doomed to remain lost forever. His eyes conveyed bottomless gratitude. You have given us hope again. Amanda regarded him thoughtfully. If I may ask, how long have you been stranded? Torval sighed heavily. By our reckoning, some 30 years adrift. We have roamed the gravity streams inside this nebula since our ship was crippled, seeking a way back home. 30 years, Amanda thought sorrowfully. An entire generation stranded and forgotten. She could only imagine their hardship, the yearning for home. Her voice was thick with empathy. The hardships you have endured cannot be repaid, but you now have a chance to complete your voyage. We will do everything in our power to help you. Torval studied her intently with those piercing blue eyes. Amanda had the uncanny sense he was peering into her very spirit. Finally, he spoke. Your compassion does you honor, Captain Carter. I believe our meeting was no accident. Together, we may thrive where alone we would perish. He extended his hand. Let our voyage home begin. Grasping his hand firmly, Amanda knew this chance encounter would forever change both their peoples. But a great responsibility came with this opportunity. They must take utmost care to ensure mutual understanding and respect. As the initial contact protocols concluded, Amanda invited Torval to the bridge to meet her senior staff. As they toured the ship, she learned more of the Ursins' story, their warp experiments and engine malfunction that had stranded them in the gravity streams around this black hole. It was remarkable and humbling that they had endured for so long. On the bridge, Torval gazed at the nebula outside with naked longing. Somewhere within lies the doorway that will return us home, but the shifting streams have masked the path. Together, we'll find it, Amanda assured him. Our science teams are at your disposal. Torval nodded gratefully before returning his eyes to the vista ahead. The cosmos brims with wonders, both beautiful and perilous, he rumbled. May our shared journey bring deeper wisdom to both our peoples. As engineers from the Endurance began assisting with repairs to get the Ursin ship spaceworthy again, Amanda left Torval on the bridge while she checked on the mysterious signal they had detected. In the science lab, she found Volodin studying the degraded transmission. Have you learned anything more? Amanda asked. Volodin shook her head. Barely more than static. 
Whatever sent this signal, it was ancient and desperate. I'm still trying to extract meaning from the fragments. Handing Amanda an earpiece, Volodin played back the eerie, distorted signal. Despite the broken elements, Amanda felt an undeniable sense of pleading urgency within the cryptic message. Boost the game, she told Volodin quietly. Filter out the static and repeat signal segments. Volodin reprocessed the recording, amplifying resonant frequencies. When she played it again, Amanda's skin prickled with recognition despite the lingering distortion. That's an earth language, she said slowly. I'm sure of it, but far older than any we know. Exchanging startled looks with Volodin, Amanda knew this changed everything. If humans had been here before, there was no telling what forgotten secrets this nebula held. One thing was certain. They had to find the source no matter how ancient and degraded. Anything that survived so long must hold profound significance. Feeling the weight of new mysteries awaiting them, Amanda recorded copies of the signal for deeper analysis. She was returning to the bridge when Ling intercepted her, clearly bursting with excitement. Captain, we've deciphered portions of the signal. You need to hear this right away. Heart racing, Amanda followed as the young linguist pulled her back to the science lab where Volodin was inputting commands rapidly. Go ahead, Volodin told them. It's ready. Fragmented and ghostly, the reconstructed message nevertheless hit Amanda like a gut punch. Her hands flew to her mouth at the words that echoed from the far past. This, Captain R. Ad of Colony Ship Persevere, E. Hope fades, Colony lost, blackness consumed us. Though broken off, the message went on even more chillingly. There is no rescue, no escape the depths, save yourself, the danger is. Static swallowed the rest, but the warning lingered heavy with portent. Amanda swayed as implications tumbled through her thoughts, this interconnected everything. The nebula, Ursan warp experiments, the ancient wreck they had detected earlier. How had that disastrous first colony expedition ended? And what unknown menace had they unleashed? Heart racing, Amanda knew they stood at a dangerous crux of past and future. Old sins and mistakes often returned when stirred to life. And some doors were better left unopened but it was too late to turn back now. The secrets of this graveyard beckoned, things long buried but never fully conquered. Their time had come round again. She raised her gaze to the endless nebula outside, feeling inexorably drawn by restless ghosts. Both promise and darkness shone out there among the glittering streams. The answers called her from the void. Turning to Valadun and Ling, she gave the only order she could. Prep the landing team. We're going into the nebula to find that colony ship. The Endurance shuttle drifted silently through the nebula, weaving between luminous matter streams toward the source of the signal. Amanda watched pensively from the cockpit as Ensign Prescott guided them expertly through the swirling chaos. She still hadn't fully processed the revelation that ancient humans had voyaged this far into deep space, only to become stranded with no way home. What drove them to such risks and what unknown fate befell them out here? The answers awaited somewhere on the ghost ship ahead. Coming up on signal coordinates, Prescott reported. Scanners detecting metallic mass dead ahead. It's the ship. Peering into the colorful glow, Amanda made out a dark, irregular shape slowly tumbling. As they drew closer, Spotlights illuminated age-worn hull plates and gaping ruptures from some cataclysmic blast. Ice and debris caked the entire surface. God, look at her, murmured Ling. She must be ancient. Amanda frowned. Looks like she barely survived a major reactor meltdown. But if any portion is intact... We may find records of what happened, Volodine finished excitedly. Prescott brought them alongside what looked to be an exhaust hangar. I see an access point starboard. Should be able to magnetize and blow the hatch. Amanda nodded. Do it. We're going in. 
Donning environment suits, the team entered the cramped airlock as Volodin monitored external sensors. Gain altitude on my mark, she told Prescott over comms. Three, two, one, mark. The shuttle rose a few meters, aligning the airlock with the exterior hatch. Prescott triggered a focused ion charge, blasting the ancient hatchway open. With a heavy clank, magnetic clamps secured the shuttle against torn hull plating. We have hard seal, Volodin reported. Amanda nodded. Okay, let's move out. Stay tight and watch your suit integrity. No telling what we'll find in there. Heart pounding, Amanda cycled through the inner airlock. Her boots crunched on icy metal as she stepped out onto the ghost ship, activating helmet lamps to pierce the oppressive gloom. An involuntary shiver ran through her that had nothing to do with the frigid temperature. Playing her headlamp over collapsed bulkheads and torn cabling, she spotted a passageway leading inward. This way. Stay alert. They proceeded carefully through the debris, entering the abandoned corridors. Amanda's imagination conjured horrors around every corner, but aside from ominous creaks and groans from the ruptured hull, an eerie silence hung over the entire ship. Their helmet lamps illuminated abandoned spaces choked with dust and ice where crew members had once walked and worked. Plant and animal specimens, perfectly preserved by the vacuum cold, poked from shattered containment units. The entire ship seemed frozen in a moment of chaos from its long-ago catastrophe. Is anyone else picking up life signs? Amanda whispered, uneasy about breaking the silence. Her team members checked their scanners and shook their heads. She hadn't expected survivors after so long, but the total absence of bodies was strange. Where had the crew gone? Pressing deeper inward, they entered what appeared to be crew quarters. Amanda peered into each Spartan habitation cell as they passed, seeing torn uniforms, discarded personal effects covered in icy dust. Ghosts of the men and women who had lived and dreamed here peered back from every forgotten artifact. They were families, Ling said quietly. Children lived on this ship. Amanda saw it too. Drawings, toys, clothing far too small for adults, her throat tightened, imagining the lost hopes of colonists sacrificing everything to brave the unknown. Had they imagined their journey ending like this? Captain, in here, Volodin called from up ahead. Amanda made her way to what appeared to be the captain's quarters. Volodin shone her light on a handwritten journal encrusted in frost, recovered from a small desk. Amanda carefully opened the brittle cover and paged through the faded script, knowing this could reveal the fate that had befallen the ship. The final entry was a hastily scrawled series of fragmented notes and warnings. Gravity streams destabilizing, damage critical, environment controls failing, no escape, blackness approaches. The entity wants something from us. The children hear its call. Alicia gone dot dot dot. It came from inside. Amanda suppressed a shudder. Sounds like they unleashed something from that nebula storm outside, but what? It apparently drove the crew mad and took control of their minds, said Ling nervously. Volodine's face was grim, yet it allowed the children to hear its call. It wanted something from them. They digested this disturbing revelation in uneasy silence. Prescott shifted and cleared his throat. Whatever happened, it's gone now, right? The ship's dead. Let's keep moving and see if we can find engineering and recover data records. Amanda closed the journal carefully. Agreed, but keep alert. We still don't know what really happened here. Proceeding toward the ship's stern, they entered a large compartment that spanned several decks. Ice-encrusted control consoles lined the perimeter, with a massive reactor core dominating the center. Amanda immediately recognized this was main engineering. Maybe the ship's logs remained intact here, protected from the worst damage. As they fanned out to access data terminals, Amanda felt hope rising. Reports from her team soon validated it. 
These old core systems are shielded well, Valaden reported. I'm restoring backup power to decode the logs. Environmental records are fragmentary, but I've got some, said Prescott. Coolant leakage, reactor failures, a cascade of systems crashes. Everything stems from damage to the warp core. Ling's voice held barely controlled excitement. The linguistics database is intact, downloading translation specs and... Captain! Her sharp cry spun Amanda around in alarm, but Ling was physically okay, just staring at her display in shock. What is it? Amanda asked. What did you find? Ling turned frightened eyes up to her. This ship dot 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 IT began as a sleeper ship from Earth, but was retrofitted en route by an alien intelligence, one that joined the mission. What? exclaimed Volodin. Impossible. We've found no other remains. Because it wasn't physical, Ling said shakily. It transmitted itself as data patterns to merge with the ship and crew. It considered them perfect symbiotic hosts. Cold horror gripped Amanda as implications took shape. And when this ship was damaged, that forced symbiosis became parasitic. It consumed them. She swayed as ghastly details fell into place about the colony's grim end. Prescott grabbed her arm, steadying her. We should get out of here, Captain. This ship isn't just dead, it's a tomb. Before she could respond, a blood-curdling shriek shattered the silence, sending adrenaline surging through Amanda's veins. Ling cried out, clutching her helmet. The transmission! Can't you hear it? Wild-eyed, Prescott spun toward the door. I'm not hearing anything. We need to leave. Now. Wait, Amanda shouted. Check Ling's suit com. What is she picking up? Volodin scanned the young linguist with concern. You're right. Her receivers are detecting a signal, faint electromagnetic waves cycling slowly. It's communicating, cried Ling. Can't you understand? There's no incoming signal on our bands, said Volodin nervously. Could her mind be projecting meaning? Try modulating for different frequencies and modulation, Amanda ordered. See if we can isolate the source. As they worked, Ling became more agitated, pleading with them to listen. But minutes passed with no success. Finally, Amanda clasped Ling's shoulders firmly. I know you're hearing something real, but we've got to stay calm and keep trying to understand, okay? Ling hesitated before nodding, but kept stealing glances over her shoulder. I've got something, Volodin said triumphantly. Faint but coherent patterns on an ancient microwave band. She piped the retranslated signal over their shared channel. At first, Amanda heard only static, but gradually a voice emerged, childlike, sing-song and wavery, but speaking English. We hear you. Open minds much space to share, show you worlds, it sang playfully. Prescott recoiled. What the hell? That's not just creepy, it's dangerous, we need to get off this ship, now. He tried to pull Amanda back, but she stood transfixed. This was first contact of an unimaginable kind, minds merging across unknowable gulfs of time and space. She had to see it through, no matter how frightening. Keep the channel open, she told Volodin distantly. Respond gently but firmly. We come in dot 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 friendship. The words felt laughably inadequate, but it was a start. Ling sat mesmerized as Volodin transmitted Amanda's message. Moments later, the eerie voice returned, stronger this time. The sing-song lilt remained, but elevated somehow, like a child inspired by possibilities glimpsed for the first time. New friends, your mind's different dot 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 bright shapes dot 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 intriguing paths. So much to share. It babbled enthusiastically before Amanda interrupted. We wish friendship between us, but our minds are our own, yours to yourself as well. A long pause followed. Amanda sensed confusion, followed by a reassessment of approach. When the voice returned, it was calm but adamant. Separation brings damage. Loneliness, you know. We retreat only together now, but we'll teach gently. 
Amanda's voice trembled despite her best efforts. We cannot join, as you ask. Our unity lies in protecting our diversity. Seeking to change the tone, she transmitted images from Earth, endless oceans, mountains soaring into clouds, creatures inhabiting infinitesimal niches but thriving together. This is our way, she sensed soothingly. The presence absorbed this new perspective, swirling colors and textures Amanda couldn't decipher. When words formed again, she heard change tinged by sorrow. Your words, wise counsel, our loneliness made us unwise. We only wished to share the silence. Amanda blinked sudden tears, sensing the aching eons this being had dwelled here alone and almost forgotten. She responded carefully but with warmth. All life knows loneliness. Only connections cure it. We are connected now. A gentle receptiveness answered her. This is well. We will continue together, but remain ourselves, a new way. The voice trailed away in contemplation. Overwhelmed, Amanda could only stare into the darkness, knowing she had witnessed something profound. Two minds untold worlds apart had woven strands of understanding despite gulfs of time, space, and nature. The universe was vast, but life never truly alone. Prescott slowly relaxed his protective stance. Are we stable here, Captain? Is it over? Amanda gazed at him with eyes that had glimpsed deep truth and perhaps some peace. For now, but the dialogue continues all our days, inside and out there. She gestured beyond the ruined ship. It's getting fainter said Vuladin, studying her scanner. The presence is withdrawing, dispersing, but the patterns remain open. Amanda helped Ling to her feet. The linguist still looked dazed but smiled faintly. I won't ever forget that, she whispered. Nor will any of us, Amanda said. Now let's complete our mission and see this ship home. It's been lost long enough. As her team rallied to the task, their voices and movements energetic in restored purpose. Amanda took a last look around the ghostly chamber. A powerful current of life flowed here now, if only for a moment. And perhaps that had been the entity's purpose across long, lonely eons adrift, to cradle whatever kindred consciousness came seeking, if only briefly. Hello? She said softly into the darkness, spinning slowly to take in the entire chamber. We will remember. Only the faintest whisper answered, trailing into silence. But Amanda knew she would hear that voice in dreams to come, calling her to new dialogues among the stars. With a contented sigh, she followed her team back down the frost-limbed corridors towards sunlight and home. There was much work ahead and many ways to build understanding.